least in two and a half weeks. Wow. We better pray. Pray, y'all. We need it. You're tuned in to the Detroit Raw Show, one of the hottest shows seen in the city of Detroit, coming out of the city of Detroit, around the world, 202 countries and provinces with your man, and the end, one and only me, Mr. Sand, 44 man. Y'all come on back, let's talk about what happened. discussion for the rest of each segment. Both campaigns have agreed to those rules. For the record, I decided the topics and the questions in each topic. None of those questions has been shared with the commission or the two candidates. The audience here in the hall has promised to remain silent. No cheers, boos, or other interruptions so we and you can focus on what the candidates have to say. No noise except right now as we welcome the Democratic nominee for President, Secretary Clinton, and the Republican nominee for President, Mr. Trump. <laughs> Secretary Clinton, Mr. Trump, welcome. Let's get right to it. The first topic is the Supreme Court. We, you both talked briefly about the court in the last debate, but I want to drill down on this because the next president will almost certainly have at least one appointment and likely or possibly two or three appointments, which means that you will, in effect, determine the balance of the court for what could be the next quarter century. First of all, where do you want to see the court take the country? And secondly, what's your view on how the Constitution should be interpreted? Is, do the founders' words mean what they say, or is it a living document to be affl applied flexibly according to changing circumstances? In this segment, Secretary Clinton, you go first. You have two minutes. Uh, thank you for having me. In the first debate, I, I set the table. In the second debate, I fired up the grill. And tonight, I feast. You know, I think when we talk about the Supreme Court, it really raises the central issue in this election. Namely, what kind of country are we going to be? What kind of opportunities will we provide for our citizens? What kind of rights will Americans have? And I feel strongly that the Supreme Court needs to stand on the side of the American people, not on the side of the powerful corporations and the wealthy. For me, that means that we need a Supreme Court that will stand up on behalf of women's rights, on behalf of the rights of the LGBT community, that will stand up and say no to Citizens United, a decision that has undermined the uh, election system in our country because of the way it permits dark, unaccountable money to come into uh, our electoral system. I have major disagreements with my opponent about these issues and others that will be before the Supreme Court but I feel that at this point in our country's history, uh, it is important that we not reverse marriage equality, that we not reverse Roe v. Wade, that we stand up against Citizens United, we stand up for the rights of people in the workplace, that we stand up and basically say, the Supreme Court should represent all of us. That's how I see the court and the kind of people that I would be looking to uh, nominate to the court uh, would be in the great tradition of standing up to the powerful, standing up on behalf of our rights as Americans. 
And I look forward to having that opportunity. I would hope that the Senate would do its job and confirm the nominee that President Obama has sent to them. That's the way the Constitution fundamentally should operate. The president nominates and then the Senate advises and consents or not, but they go forward with the process. Secretary Clinton, thank you. Mr. Trump, same question. Where do you want to see the court take the country and how do you believe the Constitution should be interpreted? Chris, I'm going to start this debate in the quietest voice possible. In the past, I have been big and loud, but tonight I am a sweet little baby Trump. The Supreme Court, it's what it's all about. Our country is so, so, just so imperative that we have the right justices. Something happened recently where Justice Ginsburg uh, made some very, very inappropriate statements toward me and toward a tremendous number of people, many, many millions of people that I represent. And she was forced to apologize and apologize she did. But these were statements that should never, ever have been made. We need a Supreme Court that, in my opinion, is going to uphold the Second Amendment and all amendments, but the Second Amendment, which is under absolute siege. Uh, I believe if my opponent should win this race, which I truly don't think will happen, uh, we will have a Second Amendment, which will be a very, very small replica of what it is right now. But I feel that it's absolutely important that we uphold because of the fact that it is under such uh, trauma. Uh, I feel that the uh, justices that I am going to appoint, and I've named 20 of them, the justices that I'm going to appoint will be pro-life. They will have a conservative bent. Uh, they will be protecting the Second Amendment. They are great scholars in all cases, and they're people of tremendous respect. Uh, they will interpret the Constitution the way the founders wanted it interpreted. And I believe that's very, very important. I don't think we should have justices appointed that decide what they want to hear. It's all about the Constitution of, of and, and so important, the Constitution the way it was meant to be. How will you ensure the Second Amendment is protected? You just heard Secretary Clinton's answer. Does she persuade you that while you may disagree on regulation, that in fact she supports a Second Amendment right to bear arms? Well, let me, let me bring in Secretary Clinton. Were you extremely upset? Well, I was upset because, unfortunately, dozens of toddlers uh, injure themselves, even kill people with guns, because, unfortunately, not everyone who um, has loaded guns in their homes takes appropriate precautions. But there's no doubt that I respect the Second Amendment, that I also believe there's an individual right to bear arms. That is not in conflict with sensible, common sense regulation. And, you know, look, I understand that Donald's been uh, strongly supported by the NRA. The gun lobby's on his side. They're running millions of dollars of ads against me. And I regret that, because what I would like to see is for people to come together and say, of course, we're going to protect and defend the Second Amendment, but we're going to do it in a way that tries to save some of these 33,000 lives that we lose every well, year. Let me bring Mr. Trump back into that, because in fact, you oppose any limits on assault weapons, any limits on high capacity magazines. You support a national right to carry law. Why, sir? Well, let me just tell you, before we go any further, in Chicago, which has the toughest gun laws in the United States, probably you could say by far, they have more gun violence than any other city. So we have the toughest laws, and you have tremendous gun violence. I am a very strong supporter of the Second Amendment, and I am, I don't know if Hillary was saying it in a sarcastic manner, but I'm very proud to have the endorsement of the NRA. I, I want to ask you specifically, do you want the court, including the justices that you will name, to overturn Roe v. Wade, which includes, in fact states, a woman's right to abortion? Well, if that would happen, because I am pro-life and I will be appointing pro-life judges, I would think that that will go back to the individual states. But I'm asking you specifically, would you if like to... If they overturned it, it'll go back to the states. But what I'm asking you, sir, is 
do you want to see the court overturn? You just said you want to see the court protect the Second Amendment. Do you want to see the court overturn Roe Well, if we put another two or perhaps three justices on, that's really what's going to be, ha that will happen. And that'll happen automatically, in my opinion, because I am putting pro-life justices on the court. I will say this, it will go back to the states and the states will then make a determination. Secretary Clinton. Well, I, I strongly support Roe v. Wade, which guarantees a constitutional right to a woman to make the most intimate, most difficult, in many cases, decisions about her health care that uh, one can imagine. They're ripping babies out of vaginas. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you raised this topic because what two better people are there to talk about women's issues? Uh, me, a woman who has had a child and has taken birth control, and him, a man who is a child and whose face is birth control. And we're off to the races. And in this case, it's not only about Roe v. Wade. It is about what's happening right now in America. So many states are putting very stringent regulations on women that block them from exercising that choice to the extent that they are defunding Planned Parenthood, which, of course, provides all kinds of cancer screenings and other benefits for a country. Donald has said he's in favor of defunding Planned Parenthood. He even supported shutting the government down to defund Planned Parenthood. I will defend Planned Parenthood. I will defend Roe v. Wade, and I will defend women's rights to make their own health care decisions. And we have come too far to have that turn back now. And in, indeed, he said women should be punished, that there should be some form of punishment uh, for women uh, who obtain abortions. And I could just not be more opposed to that kind of thinking. You believe the right to abortion goes. You have been quoted as saying that the fetus has no constitutional rights. You also voted against a ban on late-term partial birth abortions. Why? Because Roe v. Wade very clearly sets out that there can be regulations on abortion so long as the life and the health of the mother are taken into account. And when I voted as a senator, I did not think that that was the case. The kinds of cases that fall at the end of pregnancy are often the most heartbreaking, painful decisions for families to make. I have met with women who, have, toward the end of their pregnancy, get the worst news one could get, that their health is in jeopardy if they continue to carry to term, or that something terrible has happened or just been discovered uh, about the pregnancy. I do not think the United States government should be stepping in and making those most personal of decisions. So you can regulate if you are doing so with the life and the health of the mother taken into account. It's terrible uh, if you go with what Hillary is saying in the ninth month, you can take the baby and rip the baby out of the womb of the mother just prior to the birth of the baby. Now, you can say that that's okay, and Hillary can say that that's okay, but it's not okay with me. Because based on what she's saying and based on where she's going and where she's been, you can take the baby and rip the baby out of the womb in the ninth month, on the final day. And that's not acceptable. Well, that is not what happens in these cases. And using that kind of uh, scare rhetoric is just terribly unfortunate. They're ripping babies out of vaginas. <laughs> you should meet with some of the women that I've met with, women I've known over the course of my life. This is one of the worst possible choices that any woman and her family has to make. And I do not believe the government should be making it. Right, you know, let's I move on to the subject of immigration. Mr. Trump. You want to build a wall, Secretary Clinton. You have offered no specific plan for how you want to secure our southern border. Mr. Trump, you are calling for major deportations. Secretary Clinton, you say that within your first 100 days as president, you're going to offer a package that includes a pathway to citizenship. Uh, the question really is, why are you right and your opponent wrong? 
Mr. Trump, you go first in this segment. You have two minutes. Well, first of all, she wants to give amnesty, which is a disaster and very unfair to all of the people that are waiting in line for many, many years. We need strong borders. In the audience tonight, we have four mothers of... I mean, these are unbelievable people that I've gotten to know over a period of years whose children have been killed, brutally killed, by people that came into the country illegally. You have thousands of mothers and fathers and relatives all over the country. They're coming in illegally. Drugs are pouring in through the border. We have no country if we have no border. Hillary wants to give amnesty. She wants to have open borders. The border secure, as you know, the Border Patrol agent, 16,500 plus ICE last week, endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed a candidate. It means their job is tougher, but they know what's going on. They know it better than anybody. They want strong borders. They feel we have to have strong borders. I was up in New Hampshire the other day. The biggest complaint they have, it's with all of the problems going on in the world, many of the problems caused by Hillary Clinton and by Barack Obama, all of the problems, their single biggest problem is heroin that pours across our southern borders, just pouring and destroying their youth. It's poisoning the blood of their youth and plenty of other people. We have to have strong borders. We have to keep the drugs out of our country. We are right now we're getting the drugs, they're getting the cash. We need strong borders. We need absolute we cannot give amnesty. Now, I want to build the wall. We need the wall. And the border patrol, ICE, they all want the wall. We stop the drugs. We sh we shore up the border. One of my first acts will be to get all of the drug lords, all of the bad ones. We have some bad bad people in this country that have to go out. We're going to get them out. We're going to secure the border. And once the border is secured, at a later date, we'll make a determination as to the rest. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. Bingo! Bingo! I got bingo! I got bingo! I have uh, bad hombres, rapists, uh, Miss Piggy, they're all living in hell, and uh, if she wasn't my daughter. Our resources where I think they're most needed. Getting rid of any violent person, anybody who should be deported, we should deport them. When it comes to the wall that Donald talks about building, he went to Mexico, he had a meeting with the Mexican president, didn't even raise it, he choked. And then got into a Twitter war because the Mexican president said, we're not paying for that wall. It's a disaster. Hillary Clinton wanted the wall. Hillary Clinton fought for the wall in 2006 or thereabouts. Now, she never gets anything done, so naturally the wall wasn't built. It used to be a bipartisan issue. Ronald Reagan Se was Secretary the last Clinton. president Excuse to me. sign uh, immigration reform, and George W. Bush supported it as well. Secretary Clinton, I want to clear up your position on this issue because in a speech you gave to a Brazilian bank for which you were paid $225,000, we've learned from the WikiLeaks that you said this, and I want to quote, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. So that's Thank the you. question. <laughs> that's the question. Please quiet everybody. Is that your dream, open borders? Well, if you went on to read the rest of the sentence, I was talking about uh, energy. You know, we trade more energy with our neighbors than we trade with the rest of the world combined. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but I was really spinning out of control. There. <laughs> Secretary Clinton, now I'd like to ask you about an ongoing issue for your campaign. WikiLeaks has been releasing your campaign emails, many of which raise some serious questions. Uh, thank you uh, for bringing up my emails, Chris, and I'm I'm very happy to clarify what was in some of them. I'm sorry, what, Carol? What, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought I heard my friend Carol. Anyway, back to your question about the way that Donald treats women. <laughs> and that is how you pivot. <laughs> just never going to answer a question about your email. No, but it was uh, very cute to watch you try. Uh, situation. We've never had a foreign government trying to interfere in our election. We have 17, 17 intelligence agencies, civilian and military, who have all concluded that these espionage attacks, these cyber attacks, come from the highest levels of the Kremlin, and they are designed to influence our election. Now, Mr. Trump, in the last week, 11 women accuse you of sexually assaulting them. 
Do you still deny each of those claims? Chris, of course I do. I'm completely innocent. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Planet, settle down. Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything.